Morning folks, welcome back to the channel. <laughs> Another episode here on Court Farms. In November now. And uh, we just got done moving the three uh, effers into the like main, I guess we can call it main cow pen area. Thought I had the animal cane mod in here, but I didn't. So I literally <laughs> hooked up the trailer to move three cows just right hundred feet or something so yeah but they're in here they're in here they're happy might need to feed them uh, they got some food in there for now um, but we have till the end of the day with this tractor and then it's going back to RBM so main job get these bales out and stacked in the shed That was, that's a little close to that shed wall, huh? Yeah, we got all of the bales off the field in time. It was great. Thrilled about that. Just getting this into position where we can unload them. There we go, that should do. We'll probably start wrapping some of these once we get these unloaded. That's ideally the plan. Got a lot of a lot of grass bales in here. We're gonna play the game and try and go two at a time. Definitely got to be careful. There we go. Gotta go slow. Unless well, so you're going to start tipping, trust me. We got close last night when we were rushing around to get these unloaded. Oof. It likes to favor that front right a little bit, which is kind of odd. Yeah. Likes to do that. The guys over at RBM could see what we're doing with their tractor. They would never let me demo a tractor again. That's for sure. Just pushing the limits of it, right? Now we know that ideally, if we get another, we're ever in the position to buy a tractor, might want a slightly larger frame. that may be, or a heavier weight I guess even, that maybe we can do double bales, definitely makes it go faster. So 
don't really need to worry about neatness because we're going to be handling these again here shortly when we wrap them. So. cab sometimes it's just easier to do in cab I'm not gonna lie especially while bail handling that's I'll stay I'll stay true to that not as much reaching for your mouse and moving your camera around and stuff because it's all right in front of you Last one. Yeah, this tractor's definitely made things a lot smoother. And quicker. That's the biggest thing. It's, it just feels a lot quicker. It just moves quicker. Gears don't stick and stuff like it does in the International, it's just really nice. Really nice machine. We gotta figure out somewhere where to put this bale fork. But first we gotta move the tractor and get the wrapper hooked up to it. We are full steam ahead here, getting bales wrapped. Got six wrapped, we're wrapped and stacked so far, is that right? Five. This whole will be six. So, this is probably literally all we're going to be doing all day, would be my guess. Still working on getting um, something figured out for weed control interesting um, the weeds are running rampant in the uh, where the tram lines are so nothing's there to fight their growth though so they are just like I think the weeds that are in the tram lines are they just hit. The weeds and the tram lines are taller than the crop is right now, so interesting. But yeah, it's uh, this has been good. This this demo has been good, and it gives me a perspective on, you know, where we could be at some point. Would be really awesome to be able to do. Get something like this. Who knows if our little farm will ever get to that point, but we're sure gonna try. I really think things are gonna. Turn around for us once we get these crops sold. I think we're gonna have a really, really good winter selling these bales off and getting the rye crop sold. I think it's gonna be really good for us. Definitely the most money we've seen on this farm so far, so. We're just going to have to spend it wisely. Be 
I just feel like we're never going to get ahead if we don't pick up more land. That's kind of my big thing, or that's kind of my thinking right now is... We really got to get some land bought, or at least figure out some rent, something else to rent, or I don't know. The renting isn't... I'm not sure that the renting is even worth it, to be honest with you. At least the fields that we have currently. The amount of crop we get off them for what we're praying for them, I... I don't know. And that's probably why they were available for us to rent, because... The guys that are established in the area realize that. But... We are still relatively new to the area, and we just kinda... Needed anything we can get. So, we'll have to reevaluate those field rentals over the winter as well and see if we want to keep those. But a little review on the tractor. It's good. It's a it's a nice tractor. Um. Has three hydraulic hookups. Um, the loader lever is in a nice spot. It feels very convenient. Um, the gear shift is a little awkward at times, being so low like that. That can be. That could be something that I wouldn't be mad about having a little bit different. But yeah, as you can see, I mean, it's a pretty basic instrument panel there. Like I said, it's it's kind of a much more basic version of a of an R series doesn't have all the bells and whistles I love the electronic um, uh, dash display there that's really nice um, lots of room very roomy so yeah, it's good um, and it compared to the international it is it moves which is really great. Just feels like when we're doing jobs with the international, it is struggling to change gear and stuff at time. Um, so, but yeah, I don't know. Who knows? Maybe we try and get rid of both the International and the Massey um, and just invest in one tractor that can kind of do it all you know and that would mean that we need to get a a new um, I definitely mucked that situation up a bit huh I Not grabbing the bale or a wrapped bale before getting a new bale. Yeah, we would have to get a bale trailer that, um, I can drop off and it can kind of stand on its own. Um, currently that is not the case with... Why does it sound like it's still wrapping? Currently that's not the case with our bale trailer. It just can't stand up on its own. And it just lays on the ground when it's not hooked up. Gotta get you out of the way there, fella. Unless we're gonna cause issues. Alright, so how are we gonna fix ya? I'm gonna try and spin ya. We can. No, don't wanna spin, huh? Okay. 
We're gonna have to back in though. Get you from this position. There we go. We made it difficult. So yeah, that's kind of the uh, thoughts. I'm always, I'm always, I'm always have ideas, as you guys know. I like to pour them out on you guys as well. Kind of my thoughts and what the future holds. Always thinking about what's next. What could we change? What could we improve? You know, so. Here we are. So we'll keep going at this job. We we'll, won't we'll keep you. We'll keep boring you with this one. This is, like I said, this is the job for the day. Probably gonna be at this for many more hours. So. Catch you guys. At some point, when we start working on something else, probably. Morning, everybody. It is November 3 now. I missed a whole day because yesterday it was absolutely coming down. Raining buckets, as they say. Um, but that gave us time to head up north and uh, pick up a new piece of equipment. About two hours away, um, it took us... But we got ourselves a new piece of kit here. It was a fantastic deal. I don't think I would have bought it um, if it wasn't such a good deal. We only paid like two twenty, like twenty three hundred pounds for this, um, which is just incredible for a piece of equipment, uh, farm equipment. So um, yeah, this. Uh, this particular thing here is going to be a nice little machine, a little add to the farm. Um, it's the 690 can run it, which is great. At least I hope. <laughs> um, the horsepower rating on it was only like 65 or something like that. And when you run 90 on the 690, obviously. So, and we have a lot of slurry that we need to empty out. So, um, it's kind of perfect timing. Um, I was trying to figure out what the best thing to do with this is and it, or this I think 
finding this for sale was the best option. So um, we're not going to have to worry about uh, renting anything in the future and stuff like that. So yeah, looks nice on the 690 too, doesn't it? So good stuff. Um, we, oh yeah, we got the skip out yesterday. We got a lot done yesterday, actually. We got the skip moved yesterday. We got all the, all of the rest of the junk moved um, and put over at like behind the uh, livestock trailer over there. A big thing. You can see that we have more money. We've spent a lot of it, but <laughs> a big thing is that we've been messing with, or we've been uh, kind of looking around to see if anybody was interested in the big milk tank in here it was a big old milk tank and i found that similar sizes were going for like fifteen hundred dollars or fifteen thousand dollars pounds sorry um and somebody contacted me about it i listed it someone contacted me about it like two hours later they were only 30 minutes away to the west of us, and they were like, I'm going to come look at it. That was just yesterday, um, and they took it, um, so we got 15,000 pounds, um, which we then <laughs> used to repair the International for two and a half, or no, four and a half thousand, um, which is just insane. Probably more than that tractor's worth, to be honest. And then we got our, um, we had to pay for the herbicide there. And then, yeah. Oh, and then we bought this gate and we put this gate in too. So this just swings in. I wanted it to swing out. Um, having it swing in means that we're not going to be able to put as much in here, but we'll find something that we can put in there eventually. The tr none of the tractors fit in here. So we'll have to figure out how to put stuff in there, but uh, maybe some bales or something or a piece of equipment or whatnot. But yeah, so that gate works there. And then we put up another just piece of steel that we had laying around here um, right there. So yeah, looks good. Works good, looks good. And gives us a little bit more storage space. A lot has happened since I last, last saw you guys, so. Yeah, so we're going to get to spreading some slurry on our grass ground. And then we're going to probably try and chisel plow it up. Don't think this is going to last us much. Or very long, like one tank full. I don't think will last us all too long. You know what I kind of wanted to do though? I wanted to see how much it would cost for soil sampling. Oh, that's a lot of money. What does it cost for the soil sampler itself? I don't even know where that's at. Miscellaneous? Soil sampler. Oh boy. Lease? Yeah, that's not bad. I feel like that would be cheaper. I know that they have one up at uh, the Deer dealership. <sighs> it might be wise of us to get some soil samples taken on this big field before we spread on it. So, with that being said, I think we're going to head over to that east field. And yes, it, it has been very dirty in here. Okay, what the... Do I have center of gravity mod turned back on? I added some mods in here. And when I did that, I just deselected them. All, and then selected them again. So I think there's some mods that I turned off that are in here, and I think one of those is the... Um... Is the, uh... Center of gravity mod, unfortunately. 
and the uh, dynamic mud mod, but I think that's actually going to work out because it did just rain all day yesterday, so we'll play with it for this, the rest of this episode. This might be difficult to get into this field, actually. Hoping that we can do it, but... Okay. Yeah, that's why I don't like the dynamic car, or the uh, center of gravity mod. I think it's a little too much sometimes. A little too much. She's pulling her just fine right now, full. Shouldn't be an issue for the old girl. We're gonna be A-OK. -okay. I'm not gonna soil sample these fields. That's where I decided to pivot and uh, do these fields. I might as well open this gate too, eh? I think we're going to try and just back it in. Hopefully we can get in here. We should be able to. like a glove. It did finally update the map too. All of these videos I've been playing on the first version. Finally got to updating the map. I just had to go and do a lot of things with the map and that's why I didn't wanna, that's why it took me so long to update it. Get the tire out of the field, that's good, finally. Oh, since we don't have a soil sample, is it even gonna show us anything? You know, we're spinning a bit, but that's okay. He's going, just takes a little bit to get going. Fortunately, I have no idea. What we're gonna guess. Or I guess it'll just turn off for us. Since we are still using precision farming. We're only gonna run this one tank in here. I don't know if it's gonna cover it all, I have no idea, but Maybe. It looks like it may. <laughs> it did. Get that. See if we can see a difference from sky view. Not really. Perfect. The perfect amount. Now we gotta get out. It was quick. Oh yeah, so we're gonna head up to the Deer dealership, RBM, and uh, I think we're gonna rent that uh, that soil sampler. I think I think it's time that we need to do it. We have a little bit extra money in the bank coming up on January when we're gonna be able to sell our rye crop, which is gonna be exciting, and. We got a lot of silage bales that we're going to be able to sell, so... Oh, jeez. That, that super strength is on. For some reason. So. 
we're going to run back to the farm and uh, we'll head up to the dealership and we'll meet you up there. Just rolling into RBM now. I think they got some, a little bit of a change in equipment. A big old implement, I don't even know what that is. We got those steep nosed deers sitting here, but they got some horse equipment around. I heard that they uh, are now dealing with horse, so. Had that sign up there on the wall the last time I was here, but they didn't actually have much equipment around. But it looks like they finally got some in. Are these these might be cedars? Maybe we'll get out and we'll take a look. I think these horse. Yeah, these horse discs were here the last time we were here. But this is definitely new. This looks like a cedar cultivator. And it got it's like a cultivator with the cedar hoses on it, make it kind of more of a direct drill type of thing. But the seed up here feeds through this tube here. It's a nice look on that 7R too. Good looking unit there. 6145 here. These Manitous, but it looks like they may have sold the smaller one. These are cool. These are still pretty sweet. These 6Ms. 6110 and a 620. Those look nice. There's a big old drill here. 6 meter maybe. Pronto 6DC direct. I'm guessing that's a direct drill maybe or something packer wheels on there pretty slick pretty slick we're gonna have them load up the uh the soil sampler onto the trailer i didn't want to drive our tractors all the way up here it's quite a distance see what's new back here it's been a while since we've been up here so it looks like there's a lot of new stuff I think they just moved this Clayton roller back here because they wanted to put that big ol' whatever that was. Uh, looks like a cultivator or something of some sort up front. Mizzen drill, kind of older unit. Looks nice. A little bit of wear, but in pretty good condition, looks like. 5100R. That is my kind of tractor right there. That would be pretty slick to have on our farm, wouldn't it? Right, 100 horsepower, something around that point. Man, that'd be a good uh, replacement for the 690, wouldn't it? UW25, I believe this was here the last time we were here. That's a pretty big unit. 4220, in pretty good condition, looks like. Uh, RBM must be having a good year here. A lot of trade-ins. Guess what most of these are. With steep nose Ford Sebra. Got the MP lift bracket on it even. That could be nice. Could be a good replacement for the International someday. Oops, sorry sir. Get out of your way. Deutz Agrotron? Agrotron. 128, I'm guessing probably 130-ish horsepower on that, maybe? I don't know. But I'm just guessing with the numbers. 6030. It's a nice looking. It's a nice looking tractor too, that's a big old beast. Probably a little bit too big for our farm, but it could do it all, that's for sure. Ooh. Hella handler here. Nice load all. Farm special. Telescopic farm special. Now that, I wonder how much that costs. That could be a nice pickup for us. Take a lot of the jobs off the uh, international. That could be slick. Tell you what. 
Dominator. Classic. Dominators are very prevalent around here. I've seen a lot of them. Arthur even has a Dominator, I think. I don't think that's Arthur's, though. And a Chopper. What do we got? A 695 Chopper. Jaguar. That's pretty slick. Pretty slick. Always fun to come up here and look at the equipment when we have the opportunity. But anyhow, that's all. It's all a dream for us, so we'll head inside and get them to get that uh, sampler loaded up on that trailer for us. Alrighty, we are loaded up. Just swing, swing around back to make it easier. Don't want to have to back up through here. There is a nice selection of tractors. Someday we're going to come up here and buy one of those. Just not today. Alrighty, he is hooked up to the International. I wasn't sure how this thing hooks up, but it's just a three-point hookup. Gotta hook up with some hydraulics to it and all that stuff, but guess we'll see how this works. Um, hold it. Okay, you have to turn it on. Oh, jeez. Okay. You gotta kind of be strategic about it. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. This is the first time using the soil sampler in FS. 22. You're going to try and limit the amount of soil samples taken. Possible, because that is all money every time. Three. here hopefully well it's four taken okay. I'm debating if I want to take samples on the arable fields. I don't know how good the samples would be with a crop in there. I think you should do it without, I mean, I guess there's grass in here, right? But Looks like a good spot. Kind of go down the line here. I've decided to just take samples of the arable fields. Fortunately, we're going to have to stick to the tram line, so that might make things less efficient. But all right, we don't want to ruin any crop as much as we can. Just figure while we have it, we might as well do it, you know? We don't need to go down that line, eh?
doing it the other way, it said it would take 29 samples. Oh. We're going to try and do less than 29. We're at 16. We also didn't have to pay the three and a half thousand pound um, fee, like technician fee or whatever, for a person to come out here and do it. So that's good too. Only had to pay like 800 bucks for the rental of this machine. So this definitely saved us some money. We'll get samples of the other one taken and then we'll get them sent off and see what we can come up with for samples. This will make everything a lot more efficient, I think. Um, be able to spread the right amount of rates and seed and all that stuff, so it's going to be good. It was a uh, both. It was exactly 3,150 pounds to get those samples uh, analyzed. So we won't have the results back until tomorrow. So fortunately that will be the beginning of December. So hopefully the ground is still good. Um, hopefully it doesn't either snow or rain more um, to where we can't really spread on the ground so uh, we're gonna have to wait we want to do it efficiently to uh, spread uh, the rest of the slurry onto that field so um, with that being said guys um, that's going to be it for the episode. Thank you everybody who stick around and watched and thank you to the channel members. Uh, don't forget to like the video, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.